Warm welcome to everyone over there. Unfortunately, I can't greet you in person. It is quite a sad situation, but due to the pandemic, uh, we can only talk through digital word. Uh, you are just uh, new newcomers to the university, so it would be nice to have a personal greeting to you. But I think we should cope with this situation, and you are going to do so, hopefully. Uh, our topic is introduction to anatomy, as you can see behind me. Uh, we should uh, uh, deal with the anatomy, uh, what about the details of anatomy should be. Uh, but first, I should tell you some uh, general introductory uh, talks. First of all, uh, anatomy two, anatomy one, this introduction is an extremely reduced topic. So it is going to be quite easy in this semester. But uh, you should keep in mind that the second semester, this Planchnology semester, is going to be extremely hard due to this reduction in anatomy one, as well as the second part, second half of uh, this topic in this semester, the skull. If you study it uh, thoroughly, that would be a great help in the last semester, in the new anatomy semester for you. Now, after that, uh, let's deal briefly with uh, the components of anatomy. Uh, first, the, the uh, mechanisms, the mechanical structure of the body, anatomy should deal with. The nature of the body is the beginning of the medical science, and that's why you should you start at the very beginning of, of your curriculum. Uh, this structure uh, consists of different aspects, or has got different aspects. One is uh, what you are going to deal with in the dissection room, dealing with real bodies that this gross anatomy, or macroscopy, it is called, uh, you should never forget, whenever you get to con uh, in contact with the bodies, you should never forget that these were humans. So humans like you, having feelings, love, hates, everything, and therefore you should always uh, give the greatest respect to these bodies. So uh, whenever you get to the dissecting room, I don't know when, but you should meet bodies uh, personally in the future. Uh, and this is uh, the body is the greatest ever teacher in the anatomy department. Uh, gross anatomy consists of some lectures. In this semester, only two of these um, uh, songs I'm going to present to you, uh, uh, which uh, the lectures deal with uh, structures of high clinical importance. And you should uh, find the proper books on the web page of ours, for example, uh, and atlases. And those are the things to be used in studying gross anatomy. The other aspect is uh, the microscopy, so the, uh, the structures which can only be seen under the light microscope. And this is the one with which you should uh, deal in histology practice uh, using the microscope. Also, you are going to have lectures dealing with, with that. Ultrastructure only is to be studied from the lecture material and from the books, textbooks as well. And there's a third component here, the embryology, uh, which uh, deals with the development of all these uh, structures in the body. But embryology is hardly ever needed for you. Only ex very small exceptions uh, you are going to hear uh, related to the teeth uh, and the face and such stuff, and nothing else of embryology uh, you are uh, uh, eligible to, to know. Uh, this is the uh, title of our homepage. Always you should uh, refer to it, and you should press F5 uh, to refresh the material, because that is the thing which is uh, really valid for you. Uh, you can find uh, all the lecture materials, practicals, um, time schedule, uh, uh, books, what, what are uh, needed for you, and many, many useful things. So just use it as uh, uh, frequently as you can. Now, talking about uh, the, uh, the body itself, uh, perhaps you know all these things to be presented now from high school uh, studies. Uh, first of all, there are cells uh, having similar function, and these cells are grouped into tissues. Again, all the tissue is uh, doing the same, so responsible for the same function. And from tissues, organs are made. And if you put organs uh, for the uh, same um, work, same function together, then you end up with systems. Now, the logical way of studying anatomy is uh, just uh, like you've got a body 
in a kit. You know, kit, uh, a huge box, and within uh, there are small boxes having all the necessary components of a human body, and you must build this body at home. So, and that, that's that's what really. Um, uh, the logical way of studying uh, is, 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 is for. Uh, first of all, you should uh, pick uh, the bones, of course, and p uh, make a skeleton of the body. Uh, the skeletal system is one of the systems of the body which consists of bones and consists of connections between the bones. The uh, study the dealing with, with the bones is osteology. Now here is the first uh, instance I should draw attention to the fact that studying anatomy is something like learning a new language. And for learning a language you need necessarily a dictionary. So every word you are going to, to, to memorize you should know the meaning of. And that therefore dictionaries are needed. At the beginning I tell you uh, bone is os and therefore the osteology is the uh, science dealing with uh, the bones. Arthros is the, is the joint in Greek, and arthrology deals with. So arthrologists, for example, uh, the uh, final uh, medical ex experts uh, dealing with the diseases of, of the, of the uh, joints. Uh, when you've got the skeleton, you better put uh, muscles uh, which can move, which are able to move the skeleton related to each other. And this is muscular system, consists of skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle is the one which is under control of your mind. And myos is the Greek for, word for, for muscle. Therefore, myology is the uh, science dealing with uh, muscles. Uh, then you need to supply muscles for the proper work. And not only the muscles, but bones are also living structures and therefore a circulatory system, vascular system. Vase is vessel. Vascular system is needed, uh, which consists of heart and the vessels, uh, plus another aspect of the circulation later we are going to explain. And angios is the same as vase in Latin, angios in Greek, angiology is the science dealing with diseases of uh, the vascular system. Then you must give proper control to the skeletal muscle, for example, uh, to contract in a good sequence and everything, and that's what the nervous system is responsible for. Nervous system consists of central and peripheral nervous system, and neuron is the word for nerve, and therefore neurology deals with it. Well, finally, you should uh, put into this uh, half-built-up body uh, the proper inner uh, organs. Uh, viscera, viscerum is the uh, internal organ, and splanchnos is the same in Greek. So visceral systems or apparatuses um, uh, uh, involve the internal organs, and splanchnology deals with them. Now about the visceral apparatus. First, you need gas exchange for the uh, tissues to be alive, and that's what the respiratory system is responsible for. Um, the, most, the biggest organ of the system is the lung. The lung is pulmos, therefore pulmonology is the science dealing with it. Then you must uh, supply nutrients to the vascular system which distributes these and collects the waste material. Uh, the digestive system takes the nutrients um, yeah, to the blood and gastroenterology is called that because gaster is the stomach and enteros is the gut, so gastroenterology deals with it. Urogenital system is to remove the waste material for, from the body. Uh, I think you understand uros is the urine. Uh, genital system is closely related, coupled to the urinary system, therefore the common name urogenital system is. Uh, urology deals with the uh, urine system only, and gynecology uh, with the female, and uh, andrology with the male um, uh, genital systems. And finally, uh, there is a, um, a conductor or something uh, overviewing some several functions uh, equally important to the nervous regulation that is a hormonal regulation and for that endocrine uh, system is needed so the endocrine glands which release the product into the blood that's how it is distributed in the in the body and the endocrinology is the science dealing with. And finally, you need uh, to uh, give organs of special senses for the proper function of this built-up body. Believe me, uh, our body is built up beautifully. 
So biologically, we are wonderful. Not so wonderful psychologically, but biologically, yes. And therefore, I should tell you that studying anatomy is not something just memorizing things, but a logical question you ask, extremely logical answer you can get for the question. So the finally organs of special senses are needed. Olfactory system for the smelling. Rhinology is dealing with the rhinosis, is the, is the nose. And then visual system for the uh, information, visual information to be perceived. Ophthalmology is the one which deals with that. Ophthalmos is the eye in Greek. Uh, then taste sensation, you need taste buds in the oral cavity are taking this information. And because they are in the oral cavity, stoma is the, is the os, and therefore stomatology, stomatologists dealing with these uh, problems of the body. Then you need hearing and uh, the equilibrium for the balance. Uh, therefore, uh, uh, there is a common uh, science called otology because all these uh, receptor organs are in the inner ear, and otos is the ear, and therefore otology. And finally, the skin, which has got many, many receptors, and therefore informs the nervous system, your body, uh, about uh, influences coming from outside uh, the body. And uh, the dermus is the uh, skin, therefore dermatologist is the one which uh, specialized in diseases of the skin. Now, after this uh, brief introduction, so you built up the body, you should uh, now divide the body into different big portions. Uh, as everyone knows, the male and female bodies are uh, different, thanks God, that's why they attract each other. Uh, but there are similarities, and these similarities consist of the main parts of the body. First, the head is on top of the body. Again, a couple of uh, Latin and Greek terms you should be familiar with. Uh, the head is caput. When you learn uh, caput longum, for example, you need to know the meaning of, of, the, of the caput in, uh, in, in English as well. Uh, it rests on top of the neck, as everyone knows. Neck is column in Latin. And below this comes the trunk. The trunk generally divided into, trunk uh, comes from the Latin term, truncus, into two parts. The upper part, which accommodates the two lungs, the, the heart, and that one is called the chest. Chest is thorax. And below this, this one is what the GI tract occupies. This one is the abdomen or belly. Then several things hang down from the trunk, and these are the limbs or extremities. There are two upper and two lower limbs, as everyone knows. And uh, new terms are to be used because people uh, uh, love to call all this upper limb the hand, but this one is not. Uh, this one consists of three different portions. Uh, the upper one is the arm, which is brachium. Below this, uh, to the wrist, is the forearm or ante brachium. Ante means in front of. Antebrachium, and finally the hand is only this lower, most or most distal portion of the upper limb, and that is called manus in Latin. Uh, the lower limb, all this lower limb, is also divided into three different portions. Uh, the thigh uh, lies highest, and this one is called after the name of the bone in it, femur. Below this comes the leg, which is called crus in Latin. And only this lowermost part is the foot, and not all the lower limb. This one is the pes in Latin. Uh, to keep uh, in contact uh, the limbs with the, with the trunk, uh, girdles are needed. Uh, holding the upper limb attached to the trunk is the shoulder girdle, the shoulder girdle. And the pelvic girdle is the one responsible for um, joining the lower limb with the trunk. Uh, anatomy is uh, descriptive uh, knowledge, uh, and therefore uh, some uh, agreements had to be made, and these are just to be able to describe a position of uh, something within the body. Uh, main planes uh, divide the body, uh, and these main planes uh, should be uh, uh, 
percepted in the normal anatomical position. Normal anatomical position when uh, head is up, uh, the palms, the uh, anterior part of, of the hand is facing anteriorly, and the two feet are parallel with each other. And according to this, doesn't matter whether the body is lying on the back or uh, upside down hanging, doesn't matter. Always this anatomical position is the one to which you should relate the planes. Now, these planes are two vertical planes. One is going from front to back, uh, and this is called a sagittal plane. At the beginning, uh, you need explanation. Sagitta means arrow. And usually, where the, how the arrow came that uh, determined this anterior posterior, uh, uh, front to back direction, uh, determining this sagittal plane. And perpendicular to this plane, but still being vertical, is the frontal plane. Front is this part of, of the forehead here, and parallel with it should be the frontal plane. And finally, there is one horizontal plane, which is perpendicular to the previous two ones. Uh, the thing is that all the three planes are perpendicular to each other. Directions are to be used in uh, these uh, different planes, again, to be able to determine the position uh, or relation of something to another uh, thing. In frontal plane, something could lie up, and that is called superior. But because up on the body is the head, the most important bone in the head is the cranium. And therefore, this uh, equals the superior direction, upward direction equals to cranial. So this is a synonym to superior. Opposite to it is the downward direction. This is called inferior. Or because uh, inferior, at least uh, in our animal hood, we had a tail uh, facing down uh, from the end of the body. And therefore, tail is cauda. And inferior equals to caudal direction. So these are, again, synonyms to, to each other. If anything in the very uh, mid line fits, uh, then it is called median. And also in sagittal plane, uh, something could be, uh, in, in frontal plane, something could be closer to this midline, and this is called medial, or farther from the midline, and that is called lateral direction. Uh, any uh, three uh, structures fitting into the same frontal plane, uh, out of them, of course, this should be up, superior, this is down, inferior, and in between them, always called middle or intermediate, or between a laterally and medially positioned point, uh, the uh, one in the middle should be called intermediate or middle. In sagittal planes, so the one coming from front to back, also superior, inferior could be used, of course, uh, with the same synonyms. But in addition to that, something should, could lie in front of the other. And that is called anterior uh, position. And anterior uh, is the same as ventral. Venter is the anterior part of the belly. And therefore, closer to this anterior part, some, 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 something should be ventral. And opposite to it, posteriorly directed structure lies closer to the back. Uh, back is dorsum, and therefore the posterior is the same as dorsal direction. And also the intermediate uh, structure could be uh, uh, used in this uh, sagittal plane as well, as we discussed before. In horizontal plane, not new uh, adjective is to be known, anterior, ventral, posterior, dorsal could be used, something could be median fitting into the midline, this point, for example. And something could be mid, closer to the midline and farther from the midline. So medial and lateral could be also used in this plane. And the intermediate, if uh, at least three structures exist in a row of each other aligned in a row. Because the limbs are fairly movable, and uh, therefore easier to introduce new adjectives uh, related to the limbs, but not much you should deal with the limbs, of course. Uh, but for the sake of uh, completeness, we should mention these. Uh, and you are going to use some of them, describing vessels, for example, the big blood vessels on the limbs. So something uh, uh, according to the axis of, of the limb, which lies closer to the trunk, 
should be called proximal, so closer to, that is the meaning of proximal. So instead of superior and inferior, here you should use the proximal, and instead of inferior, the opposite to proximal is the distal, distal farther from something, farther from the uh, trunk, that is called the distal direction. Uh, when you deal with the teeth in the second semester, very specialized adjectives are to be used there, too early to mention now, but you are going to learn them uh, in detail. Then, talking about axes, the axes are important when you analyze movements of joints. Uh, the only joint which is going to be very important for you is the temporomandibular joint, but you should give the axis around which the mandible moves during chewing. Therefore, axes are also important, as well as for the exam as well. Uh, these axes are determined by using two directions. Uh, the, the one which from up, down is constructed is could be, uh, could be called superior, inferior, or cranial caudal, but easy to say vertical. Vertical has a meaning in everyday English, so the up and down direction connected uh, determines the vertical axis. The sagittal, now this is uh, quite interesting because names of planes uh, should never be used to determine axes or directions or anything except the sagittal. So sagittal, not only the plane could be called, but uh, the axis which from anterior to backward is directed, therefore anter anterior, posterior, or dorsal ventral uh, means the same as sagittal axis. And there is transverse axis from side to side. You should not say horizontal, because in the horizontal plane, uh, you can draw axes as many as you like, so unlimited number exists. Therefore, transverse is not a good definition uh, for the medial lateral or left to right uh, axis. There are, of course, complex, not uh, fitting to uh, any of these previously listed, uh, complex axes. Uh, to determine them, you should uh, tell relation of one end to the other one. And therefore, this one, uh, the, what you can see here on the back side of the body, this comes from superior and lateral and uh, projects or goes down to inferior and medial. Sometimes not only two adjectives, but three are to be combined, if not only from lateral, superior, medial, down, but from lateral, anterior, superior, to medial, posterior, and down. The axis is related. Uh, these are the complex axes. Now, talking about uh, this uh, beautiful uh, skeleton of the body, uh, 206 bones, you should not memorize this number, of course, uh, are put together. And the main functions is to uh, give a framework, uh, the skeleton framework of the body, as well as defend very important uh, internal organs, as well as these bones, if they are moved by muscles, these are the passive components of the movements of the locomotion of the body. And uh, because uh, some of them in adult, mainly the hip bone, con uh, as well as the vertebrae, contain the red bone marrow, Therefore, equally important function is uh, the production of the new um, blood cells, the newly generated blood cells which are released to the blood. Blood cells should be replaced uh, time after time, of course. In general, the structure of bone, here you can see a long bone. This one happens to be the bone of the thigh, the femur. And uh, these bones consist of an outer uh, uh, Com, uh, compact uh, layer and an inner spongy, and this spongy is the one which may accommodate red bone marrow. The outer compact layer made up of different systems which are very tough and giving hardness to the bone, uh, being able to support the body. Uh, the bone is a living uh, tissue, as I mentioned before, therefore it needs blood supply as well as at least the periosteum is innervated by sensory nerves. So these blood supply and the nerves are uh, tra uh, traveling within the connective tissue sheath around the bone, and that one is called the periosteum. Peri means around, so periosteum is the connective tissue sheath of the bone. So in general, the histolo histological structure you are going to deal with in, in histology uh, prax. Uh, marrow cavity is the one, I said, co may, may contain the red bone marrow. 
Of course, uh, uh, within the bone, there should be predicted lines according to which powers act on the bone. And according to these power lines, uh, lamellae trajectories are formed by, by bone, bony, bony tissue. Uh, interestingly enough, if uh, uh, in another uh, unusual position develops in the body after operation or something, these trajectories are remodeled. So the previously used ones are resorbed and new uh, ones are built up according to the new uh, direction of acting power onto the bone. Uh, we should classify them. And this one is a very nice example of long bones. This is one of the classes. Uh, I think it's quite natural. When one dimension of the bone is much less than the other dimension that determines the long bone, each of them consists of a middle portion called the diaphysis. Dia is be uh, in between. That's what the physiophysis is to, to grow, gr grown in between. And on top of, on both ends of the diaphysis, there are two epiphyses. And because long bones are mostly found in the uh, limbs, therefore one of the epiphyses should be called proximal, closer to the trunk, and the other should be called distal epiphyses, farther from the trunk. Uh, there are some bones you must uh, know, not, not many out of the 206, these ones in this semester, to be known by, by name. The bone of the arm is the humerus. This is, uh, in fact, uh, the drawing of the humerus. Uh, there are two bones in the forearm. One is uh, lying on the side of the thumb, and that is the radius. And the other is the opposite, at the side of the little finger. That one is called the ulna. Uh, the thigh bone is the only bone, one bone in the thigh, and this is called the femur. And in the leg, again, you can uh, find two bones, one on the side of the big toe, and that is the tibia, and the other, on the opposite side, is the fibula. So these are to be memorized. memorized. Uh, contrary to the long bones, if bones have got almost the same dimensions in any direction, then you talk about short bones. For example, uh, in, in the proximal part of the hand, you can come across with them. Uh, that is especially important for you. I would say that this one is the most important bone, in addition to the lower jaw, uh, to dentistry students. And this one is the maxilla. So uh, there are bones which contain uh, spaces within, uh, quite big spaces they may contain. For example, the maxilla has got uh, the high most cavity inside. And th that's what uh, makes the name of them pneumatic bone. Pneumos in Greek is air. So air containing bones are the pneumatic bones. Uh, and uh, the last uh, uh, group of bones uh, consists of bones uh, which are flat. And therefore, so the third dimension of the bone is uh, very small. And therefore, you talk about flat bones. And amongst the bones of the uh, posterior superior part of the, of the skull, you can come across with them. Uh, the bones are to be connected, kept together uh, through several connections. Division is to be made. One connection is called the continuous connection, when a tissue makes continuity between two adjacent bones. In Greek, uh, these are called the sin arthrosis. You know that sin means together, put together. Uh, contrary to that, the interrupted connections, the discontinuous connections, are called diarthrosis. Uh, continuous connections, depending on the tissue between the two bones, could be either uh, synostosis, os, as you remember, is bone. So when the bony tissue unites uh, the two adjacent bones to each other, you, you call this synostosis. A uh, nice example is the sacrum. For, uh, another the type of connection when cartilage connects bones with other bones. Uh, the cartilage in Greek is chondros. So these are the synchondroses, or synchondrosis in single. And it could be connective tissue intervening two between two bones. One, when ligaments keep the bones together. These are, for example, found between vertebrae and vertebrae and ribs. And this ligamentous connection is one of the examples for syndesmosis. Syndesmosis uh, comes uh, from the word desmos. Desmos is a big thread or something like that, rope or thread in Greek and uh, that uh, uh, relates to the ligaments in this case. 
There is another specific uh, ligament uh, connection made by connective tissue between bones mostly found between the bones of the skull. And this is a capillary gap between the two bones, which is bridged over by several hundreds of thousands of very tiny mini connective tissue fibers. And altogether, this one is called the suture. Uh, and finally, being the most important for you, for dentist students, how the teeth are uh, kept in position within the upper or lower jaws. And this again resembles to the suture, but not only one plane, but all around the, the tooth, there are many, many small ligaments. And this uh, kind of syndesmos is called the gonfosis. In detail, you should uh, learn in uh, later studies. Now, the discontinuous or interrupted connections, diarthrosis, uh, these are the synovial joints, so real synovial joints. Uh, sometimes all the, uh, some books refer to all the connections as joints, but here in this department, the joint equals to this type of connection only, the synovial uh, joint category. Uh, necessary components, it uh, consists of, uh, most of the uh, examples have got one part, one component being convex, uh, which is accommodated by uh, the opposite uh, uh, component, which is uh, concave according to the shape of the convexity of this, and according to that, male and female parts are to be distinguished. Uh, the articular surfaces, the surface facing to, towards the joint, uh, should always be covered by different tissue, something which allows sliding on top of the other bones. On bones, that is not the best uh, situation, so to reduce the friction between the two components, cartilage is the one which covers the articular surface. In most of, the, uh, of our joints, this is of hyaline type. I know that it's too early, but in histology, you should learn the types of the cartilages. Hyaline is uh, hyalos, is, is, is a glass, so something like a glass. Uh, anyone having a chicken bone or anything should be uh, familiar with the consistency of this hyaline cartilage. So when uh, big uh, mechanical powers act, this hyaline is a beautiful cartilage, but not tough enough. So therefore, specific cartilage, the so-called fibrous cartilage, is to be found on top of the joint surface. Sometimes between the two joint surfaces, especially if they are not corresponding well enough according to shape to each other, therefore this so-called incongruency, uh, not, uh, not uh, uh, fitting into each other uh, completely, is equalized uh, by intervening articular discs, so that may be not a necessary component of a joint, and finally, all this joint, because it contains synovial fluid, so something which resembles to the egg white, which lubricates the surfaces, and this fluid should be kept in position, of course. Therefore, the uh, joint is covered by, sealed by, a joint capsule. And uh, belonging to some of the joints, uh, ligaments are uh, the ones which uh, keep uh, ensure uh, the, the positioning of the two bones uh, with each other. In the future studies, uh, the very important, almost the first thing you, you must ask, what's the shape of the joint surface? Because this is the one which, in most of the time, determines the function of this joint. Even if uh, I told you almost exclusively the temporomandibular joint is to be known for you in the future, uh, very good to give the shape of this geometrical shape of the joint surface because that one is the one according to which the joint can move. Uh, how to classify these joints? So these were the necessary components of the joints and now the classification. Classification is made according to the number of the axes. Of course, axis could be one, two, more than two, and so according to that, you should talk about uni-axial, if there is one axis only. These joints always have got cylindrical surface. Of course, one concave cylinder fits into another convex cylinder, and the cylinder has got a single axis, always single axis, and uh, you should determine how the axis stands, and according to that, the movements could be analyzed. Uh, the two different types are the hinge and the pivot uh, joint, and the difference is uh, in uh, the, the relation 
of the long axis of the participating bone to the uh, axis of the joint itself, axis of the joint surface. And in case of the hinge, these two are perpendicular to each other. Good example would be using your hands doing this, but everyone has seen hinge on the side of the door, so that is a hinge joint. And when the axis of the bone uh, is, uh, is, is similar or going parallel with the, uh, the axis of the joint surface, then this one is the pivot joint. That would be the model for the pivot joint if you put the two hands like that and one turns around the other. So that was the difference between the two uniaxial joints. Then uh, the biaxial joints, these axes are always perpendicular to each other. One is when an X surface fits into the uh, corresponding uh, um, uh, female X surface. And the other one is the saddle joint. Saddle, you know the saddle, English word, on the back of the horse. Uh, the uh, uh, ellipsoid joint can move around the long axis and can move in the opposite direction as well. A saddle joint is the one which could be represented by using this part of your hand. Has got one concavity and a, a, a parallel, perpendicular to this, another con Vexity. The opposite uh, component has got the same curves and they fit with each other, allowing two types of movements. Again, the parallel, uh, perpendicular to each other. The plane of the movements are perpendicular to each other. So the difference between the two biaxial joints uh, is that the ellipsoid has got male and female parts, but the saddle has got male and female on each side. So the one convexity plus concavity on one side, and the same on the opposite side of, of, of the con contributors. Then more than two axes should be determined multi-axial joints. Uh, the best example for multi-axial is the bowl fitting into a socket, the bowl and socket joint, and it is called a spherical joint. And the other one is the plane joint. Uh, difference between the two joints, each joint can move around unlimited number of axes, but the difference is in the extent of the movement. The spherical allows quite a big extent, quite a big freedom of the movements, uh, but the plane joint only in any direction, but very limited movement uh, it is able to do. Movements of the joints, uh, new terms are to be known. Flexion extension is the first, uh, related to the limbs. When the uh, limb itself becomes shorter, so it means the axis between the two bones get decreased, that's what we call flexion. And the opposite is uh, when the ang uh, angle between the two bones gets bigger and uh, the limb gets elongated, that is called the extension of the limb. Another movement is the adduction, abduction. Add, like in English, add, two added by something, add is two. So moving towards the trunk, that equals to adduction, and ab means from, so away from the trunk. If something is moving, that is called abduction. And finally, the rotation, when the movement of the bone around its own axis happens, so the rotates, that is the other rotation, and rotation should be divided according to the direction of the rotation, inward, outward, or media rotation, lateral, and that's why the ad adjectives we learned before uh, are needed for. Uh, specific movements are protraction, retraction. Again, dentist students, that is very important. When the mandible in the horizontal plane shifts anteriorly, that is called protraction, or the shoulder could be protracted, pulled anteriorly. Opposite is the retraction when it moves to the back, mandible or the shoulder. Elevation depression, again, talking about the temporal mandibular joint or the joint of the jaws. Uh, Elevation when the mandible moves up or the shoulder moves up and depression is the opposite. And when you uh, combine all these movements together uh, at the final extent, the biggest extent of the movement, so this combination is called the circumduction. For example, the upper limb in the shoulder joint makes the circumduction around the surface of a cone or something like that. Finish. That was osteology and arthrology together, introduction two. Then the myology, so talking about the muscles. Uh, the muscle uh, is an individual organ, and the organ is surrounded by a connective tissue a sheath. Around this is called the fascia, around each of these. 
plus uh, some compartments, some groups are again could be kept together like uh, in the case of the forearm all the muscles are surrounded by a fascia and this fascia at certain um, points sends septa uh, to be attached to the uh, deeply lying bone and by this the septa uh, muscles are put together and separated from each uh, uh, the, the groups are separated from each other so the muscles with a similar function are grouped in one compartment of the muscles using these connective tissue septa uh, each muscle is a, uh, an organ i told you and therefore should be surrounded by connective tissue supplying uh, blood vessels and uh, nerves to the muscle itself uh, the morphological classification, there are many, many types, as you can see. Uh, the uh, most frequently occurring one is this one, which is a, a spindle-like muscle, where is a nice illustration, like this one uh, here. has got a single belly, but may have uh, two bellies connected with a common uh, connective tissue uh, uh, part in between them, or even more bellies it can have. And another uh, category is when the muscle is flat uh, and the, these muscles, of course, should have an attachment also being flat. And this flat um, attachment is called the aponeurosis of the muscle. Uh, two attachments, at least two attachments to bones a muscle should have. Uh, one is to be considered as origin and the other is the insertion. Uh, usually, uh, conventionally, the origin is the one which is more fixed, and the more fixed uh, point of limb, for example, is usually closer to the trunk, and the opposite is the movable part, the less fixed point, and it is farther from uh, the trunk that is distal in position. But the thing is that uh, they may change, uh, usually uh, according to that, towards the origin. Uh, the distal attachment is pulled, but if the distal uh, bone is fixed, then everything uh, changes and the origin is pulled, pulled towards the, um, uh, the insertion point. Good example for that, if I'm uh, lifting something up uh, uh, in the uh, elbow joint, then the more fixed is the humerus so towards this bone, the forearm is moved. But when I'm hanging down from something, then the forearm is fixed, and towards the forearm I can pull up my body uh, through the flexion of the elbow joint. So this is also to be considered and uh, taken in consideration. Uh, this is a very important thing so when you analyze movement of a muscle. Muscle can only contract, nothing else. So by contraction can only pull. Using muscle, using uh, joint mechanisms, um, some body parts could, could make pushing force. But the muscle um, involved in this always contracts and through the mechanism it, is, it may push something. If you are uh, familiar with or you remember vector geometry, you can easily uh, determine the function by knowing the origin and insertion and the type of the joint which is bridged over by the muscle, you can easily figure out the function. You are not supposed to study, but you can just figure out logically uh, the insertion of the, uh, uh, the function of the muscle, what muscle is able to do. And that's for now. Thanks for your attention and soon we are going to continue.